Good evening, and welcome to the INS Brace Issue, Aha Moments at Last. I am really, really thrilled that you're with me this evening. It's been such an amazing, awesome week, and with temperatures changing and wind blowing and rain coming, and I know in some places you all have been having lots and tons and tons of snow. And that's okay because this is the season. And because it is the season, it's perfectly fine to have snow at this time of the year. I know some people are complaining, but that's okay. One of the things I want you to always remember is to be ready for what's next. Because whatever is next, always know that everything is working out for you. And as everything works out for you, it makes all the difference. And that difference is made because, is that difference is made because whenever you know that you're doing the best that you know how, and I can tell you this, the only thing that we can do is to do the best that we can whenever we are in whatever situation. And doing the best and being the best person that you know how to be is really key because as you are being the best that you know how to be, knowing that is all you know how to do at that moment is okay. In fact, it's more than okay. Now, as we go through life, we will find that we can learn more things about many other things. And as we're learning more ways of being, more things that we can do and how we can change the way we view things, then we might start looking back and go, had I known this then, you see, then I would have done something different. One of the things you gotta give yourself some grace for is we can only do what we know at the time. And because we can only do what we know at the time, that's enough. And because it is enough, be okay with that. Because whatever it is, is always working out for you. And as it's always working out for you, it's working out for you in your favor Sometimes it doesn't look like it, but it is because everything works out for you and for me. And I know that sometimes I still get a little bit discombobulated because it looks like it's taking too long to work out. Like I got some control over how long it's gonna take. And that's the thing we get to get in the energetic space of allowing, accepting and receiving without trying to control every single aspect of it, every piece of it. And the more we're in the energetic space of not trying to control, it makes life a lot easier. And the more, more we do it, the easier it gets. The more we do it, the easier it gets. So as you're going through your aha moments, sometimes you won't even realize it until later on. I remember growing up as a child, my uncles and my grandfather and all of the adults in my life were readers. And I mean, they read all kinds of books, all genres. And after they would read the books, they would bring them to us, to my mom's house, so that we could read them. So about every quarter, we would get a whole new stack of books and we'd just go through them like they were candy. We just loved them. I enjoyed so much reading about faraway places. And Italy was one of my favorite places to read about because they were taking the siestas and they were having these piazzas and they had the, um, at nighttime, they, these are grown folks, I'm 12, 10 years old, of course. And they are sitting around having their dinner and as they're having their dinner, they're enjoying a glass of red wine, red wine. I never, I don't recall ever reading a book where they were drinking white wine, <laughs> that's interesting. So they were drinking red wine and all was going well. And in my, my child's mind, I set up the vision that one day I would be in a faraway country. And in that faraway country, I would be sitting with people from around different places around the world. And we would be having a conversation, laughing, talking, and drinking red wine. How cool was that? I did experience that, not in Italy, but in Subic Bay, and it was amazing. Subic Bay in the Philippines. And it was amazing because that evening we had been sitting around the table, people from all over the world, laughing, talking, dancing, having a grand old time. And we were actually drinking beer. 
So the next morning when I woke up, sometimes it takes a little while for the aha moment to kick in. The next moment, morning when I woke up, I woke up and I said, wow, this is amazing. I actually experienced one of my childhood dreams, not in Italy, in Subic Bay, Philippines, and with beer, but it was the same thing. And I say that because sometimes when we are expecting something, we put all our desires out into the universe and we're expecting them to come back and we're looking for answers and the answer comes, but not the way that we thought it would come. So because it didn't come exactly the way we thought it was going to come, we sometimes overlook it. We get to be in the energetic space of knowing and allowing and accepting that it has arrived, not the way we thought it was, but it is here now. So we open up that package, whether it's a pretty package wrapped in red ribbon or whether it's just a package that's there, but we get to open up that package. And as we open up that package, man, things start to change. And over time, we will start to reflect back on that package arriving and go, wow, what took me so long to recognize that my desires of my heart had arrived? Oh my goodness, that is so amazing. And when you do that, you know, you know that you know. And as you know that you know that you know, it just becomes magical, magical. Oh, B. Baylor, thank you so much for joining me. This is my guest this evening, and I am excited to see you, girl. I'm excited to be here. You look so beautiful, and we're dressed alike. We are. We're both wearing blue. How cool is this? This must be the day that blue makes us pop, so we're just going to pop all over the place. Absolutely. I'm so happy to be here on thank a Saturday. You. Yes. Now, B. Baylor is my guest, and I am so thrilled that she's with us this evening because B has a whole big toolbox of things that she can do and all of the stuff that she does. So B Bailey is a high performance business and marketing expert in all facets of personal and business development. She is an international speaker and author. B works with established women embarking upon a new path. It's really great when you know who you work with because it makes it a lot easier. B has 15 years of working in the nonprofit sector as an expert in all facets of business and personal development. You get value, invaluable insight from someone with a history of success when you work with B. B. She's on a mission to connect women entrepreneurs, to collaborate with women, to provide personal development workshops, sustainable wealth, global solutions to increase economic disparities. B enjoys inspiring and supporting women to reach their highest potential and purpose through teaching, training, leadership, online workshops, networking, and professional business nonprofit coaching. Mm. Baylor is the founder of B Baylor Coaching and Marketing, a full service coaching and consulting firm. Her memoir, Rise Up, Take Charge, Overcome, succeed, reflects on her own personal journey. Bailey is the co-host of her very own TV talk show, The Now Network TV, an ambassador for Be Connected, and currently the global advisor for the Intervention, for Intervention Council for Women in Africa. She is a member, now hear this, she is a member of the Institute of Coaching at McLean Harvard Medical School. Bailey is a proud mother of three children and eight beautiful grandchildren. She loves to travel, horseback riding, and in her spare time, she loves volunteering and paying it forward. B. Baylor, I am so thrilled that you are with me this evening. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Ines Bracey, um, whom I had the pleasure of meeting through the social media platform. And uh, we've been really close friends ever since. You never know how that connection can happen far in, in, in a distance. And then you become so connected that you're best friends. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in Florida on the beach and 
yes. being the girl talking that girlfriend stuff <laughs> yes, we both yes, compliment yes. each other <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I am so looking forward to that, B. And one of the things this show is all about is aha moments. So what I'm going to ask you to do is if you would share a, an aha moment with, the, with our audience that really helped you to change your life and to see things differently. I definitely will. And let me start by saying again, thank you. And as I get started, one of my, one of my aha moments was really getting to meet you, Inez, and having you go through the coaching component that comes out in you just by listening to my conversation. And, and I started thinking to myself, when we were talking about a, an issue that came up, I'm in that mode of always, always thinking that I have to give something, I have to be somewhere, I have to be all of that to so many people. And you, something just welled up in me when you said, B, you don't have to do anything, but just love you. And I began to start thinking to myself, have I not been doing that? And I just feel like I pour my heart out I give so much. And that aha moment was really waking up, major heart attack, open heart surgery. And it was aha, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to love me so much that nothing, nothing can stop me. And thinking that, boy, I don't have to be all of that to all the people all the time that I could just be and just stay in that space and grasp all of that energy. So many of us feel like we have to be all that. We have to put out the fire. We have to be the superwoman. We have to be everything. And I just see that as even for a relationship. And boy, have you, that's something that I would love to just talk about when you start thinking about, boy, relationships, why do we stay in them? What is in it for me? And I know that I've stayed in a relationship that was not good for me. Aha! And when you wake up and you just think, I poured all of this, me, and uh, my time and effort into a relationship and I didn't have to do it. And that's so profound to really let women know to take a deep breath and stop because when the aha moment comes, you're gonna start un unraveling all of those things that were not good for you, just wasn't healthy for you. And when you do let it go, it definitely becomes that aha moment. Would you agree, Inez? I totally agree. That is a huge aha. Sometimes we stay in relationships because they, they're familiar. And that's the biggest thing, familiar. We know we love familiarity. And because they are familiar, well, that's okay. I'm going to go along with this, go along to get along. I posit to you that if we don't have to go along to get along, if it is not working for us, and sometimes we know because our stomach starts to messing up, we feel bad and getting, start getting migraines. Why are you going to stay in a, in a relationship that allows you to feel that way? The thing is, though, B, and you had courage. Courage is a huge factor in making the change that we intend to make in our life. And because you had the courage to say, wait a minute, this is not serving me. It's really not serving the relationship. Let me let this go. And letting it go could create a void because now that familiarity is not there. So how did you feel that void? What did you start to do to take better care of B? Setting routines and, and really waking up or, or thinking outside the box. Setting date nights with me, pouring a glass of wine, creating a beautiful meal and just serenading me without the company or 
other people. Well, you know, relationships can be anybody. Mm -hmm. And I found myself really serving others and making me last. And when you wake up and you just say, and I'm going to do it tonight. I make this huge pot of chili. I'm going to pour a glass of wine and I'm just going to prop my feet up and do me. And you know what? Unapologetically. That's courage. That is very courageous because sometimes people think, well, why should I use my dollars and make this wonderful meal? And only I am here to eat. I do it all the time. I've been doing it for years because I've <laughs> I learned a long time ago, I, the bet, if I take care of myself exquisitely, then whoever comes into my life will see that. And they either step up or step out. And either one is just fine. Try with me. Yeah. Because you know, when, when, when people come, they're, they're very focused on how you treat yourself. And they mimic that or they like, oh, B doesn't care if you do her or call her this name or that name. Because if you don't show people how you want to be treated, and it really starts with you, that you're the only person that can show others how you want to be treated. And that also, Inez, becomes an aha moment that I'm going to take care of me to the fullest. Does it sound selfish? Maybe. I don't know. But it feels good to me, right? And isn't that what my heart desire that not all relationships are good for you? And I'm talking not just, a, you know, a male to woman. I'm talking about business to business. I'm relationships and just really family is, is part of that equation as well. But you do not have to like lay down that blanket over a bridge of trouble water and be all of that, okay? And I stopped doing that. And when I did, my plate really felt empty. Mm. And then I, I just went to a, a smaller salsa. Uh, that, <laughs> that's enough on it, right? You don't have to have that big plate to have all of the, put all of those things on your plate and just keeping my cup filled. And, and I just, I didn't realize like really waking up, it's a lot to care for yourself. I know. When, you said something that I want to mention. You talked about selfish. And selfish has been given a really bad rep. Yeah. People say, oh, she's so selfish. He's so selfish. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't take exquisite care of yourself, how are you going to take care of others? And many people use that, oh, I got to take care of this person. I got to take care of that person. So I always say, fill your cup first to overflowing. Because when you're giving from the overflow, it's easier to do. You want to do it. It's exciting to do. But when you're giving from an empty cup, it depletes all of your energy as well. And, and that cup can, remains empty. Mm -hmm. And what does it take to fill that cup? I, I think about one of my clients, Judy Credit, has this business called Grace Poor. And if your cup is depleted because you've been on this mission of thinking you have to be all that to, to all those people, your cup has to remain with something in it at all times. And so many women deplete their cup because they want to be all that. I decided a couple of years ago that I did not want to be all that to everyone. And, and I have time. I have time to care for me, to think, to eat right, to, you know, just think things through, go where I want to and be in places. Am I saying I don't want to be in a relationship? I'm not saying that. I'm just very methodical about how I enter that relationship. Getting out of a uh, unhealthy or toxic relationship wasn't good for me. And so now I have that time to really take care of me. That's awesome. And give yourself the space and the time. I would say that it's not important that you put any kind of limit on how long it takes or how short the time is. Yeah, yeah. Just how it makes you feel and how it makes you feel is going to determine how long or short it is. But take an exquisite care, be bay woo. Ah. Which, which leads me to, can I do another aha moment? Yes, of course. <laughs> which leads me to really, really thinking 
and you wake up one morning and you start thinking and looking around your beautiful apartment and wow, you've downsized once or twice in your life and something just comes up inside of you like, I am not happy here. Looking at your closet and this closet just filled with beautiful clothes and shoes and I am not happy here. And I feel like I'm going to be confined even after my heart attack. And my kids are like, you know, they're going to be all over me. Like, don't do this, mom. Don't go this place. And I'm like, I'm not going to go down that road. And I made a drastic, drastic lifestyle change for me. And not it's not for everyone, but for me, it was stepping out into the nomadic lifestyle. And ladies, let me tell you, when you do it and you do it single, that's that's the drastic part of it. Because going from an apartment, big, roomy, into a, 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 a tiny home, it's mesmerizing. And it just filled my soul. It warmed my heart. I, I realized I didn't need all of that you know, furniture and clothes and all of the little bitty pieces and my arts and artifacts and dishes, realizing that the weight mm, was lifted off of my shoulder when I began to give away things and begin to let some things go. And just like the cloud just opened up, even tears flowing like, my God, how many people live in this predicament? just for me. Not everybody could do it, but when I began to say, I'm going to do this, and I did it. I did it. I was like, I purchased the RV and put it into a location that was good for me and put the furnishing, and it was mine, and it felt so good. It was an aha moment sleeping. Oh my gosh, I am in this tiny home. I am here right now. It's like, what are people, and then I begin, what are people going to say? What are they going to all laugh at me? Oh my gosh, on and on and on. And, and my, my God said, your time, this is your lifestyle. It's so holistic. It's, it's crystal clear. And I even have had people say, B, you seem so happy. I said, I'm free. I hope that's a good word to use. Freedom is beautiful. That's, that is so powerful. I got chills when you said that because freedom is very powerful. And freedom for you, me, and everybody has a different concept of freedom. And some people never experience it because they are afraid to step in the water. And because they are afraid to put their toe in the water, they keep holding themselves back from the freedom that they know they desire and deserve, but they are afraid because somebody told them they shouldn't do this or whatever. You know, people talking in your ear all the time. Oh. And if you're, listening well, to the, <laughs> if you're listening to the news and all of that, it could actually scare you to death. Fear, and, and I, I know even I went to you, Inez, and this was, this was really directly in September, I had the open heart surgery. By November, I already had the RV parked and, mm -hmm and was in it around Christmas time. Now that's drastic. And that's why I used the word drastic. But when that urge comes and it is time, it's an aha moment. Like I knew way back that that was something I want to do, but a sentinel event had to happen for me to make that move. I did not put my toe in the water beloved, I jumped in the water. <laughs> exactly. You jumped in and you swam. And that is just right. the most awesome thing. Because you knew for years, you just like I, I've been wanting one and I haven't even gone to look at another one lately. And I told myself, I'm going to start back going to look at them until one says, this one is for you, Inez. And when it does, then I'll get it. The thing is, when you did that, you had no regrets. You just, it's almost like you burnt the bridge of regret so that you could move forward joyfully, blissfully, excitedly with your life. And that is one of the things that I really, really trust that women, men, children can get. We get to take full 1000% responsibility for ourselves. Now that can be really scary when you've been blaming and shaming. 
But when you decide, no matter what, I am taking full responsibility for me, it causes the world to change for you because you see it differently now. I see it different. And you know what, Inez? You also, what the what if, what, oh my gosh, poof, your life can be gone. And then you, you know, did you do what you wanted to do? Did you act or did fear keep you from or being comfortable or being just complicit in the places you are? And, oh, there are a lot, there's a lot of us. And, uh, you know, I come from a family where my mom is always don't do that or don't, everything's bad. And, and that's the world that I grew up in. And that just kept a lot of us at bay. Like we weren't stepping out or going far away. We're gonna stay right here because this is what we know. But I just like blissfully, like we're gonna do this with no regrets because my life was in the hands of like, I, I, I don't know, what if, what if? And so I have no regrets about what if. And that's how you live your life out loud you, on your terms, unapologetically, intentionally as well. Exactly. Now, B. Bay, let's tell people how they can get in touch with you. Absolutely. Uh, you can find me on social media, um, Instagram. You can also reach out to bbaylor.com. Or just go through Ines's beautiful show, uh, The Wind Network. Um, or you can, you know, inbox me, message me. Just look for V Baylor, High Performance Coach. And I would love to have a conversation with you about lifestyle changing, shifting, moving into a space uh, where there is freedom and a holistic lifestyle where everything is good for you and feel good. I would love to have a conversation with any woman who just want to hear about it, just to remove the stigma and the fear that we as younger women, we can actually have, have our life made up the way that we want to. And it's not for everyone, but it works for me. Awesome. Thank you, B. This is Inez, and you can reach me at inezbracy.com inezbracy.com or on social media on Facebook and LinkedIn. I am absolutely thrilled that you have been with me this evening. It makes all the difference because many times we are having the same thoughts that you hear my guests talking about and they don't really stick until you hear somebody say, well, you know what? It's really okay to do that. It's better than okay to do that. So then it gives you, allows you to give yourself permission to go ahead and do the things and be the person you know yourself to be. Because as long as we are being the person we know ourselves to be, oh my good gracious, it makes all the difference. Anybody can tell you who you ought to be. Girl, you ought not to do that. Oh, why would you do that? And then you step back and you look at the person that's saying that and go to think, to, wait a minute, hmm, maybe that's not the person I ought to be listening to. Let me listen to my inner being. Let me listen to my spiritual self. Let me reconnect with the soul purpose that I came onto this planet for. And as I'm reconnecting with my soul purpose, hey, that makes all the difference. And as you reconnect, knowing that you get to create everything that comes to you. And sometimes you get blindsided by it. Goes, did I really bring that in? You did. You didn't know you were bringing it in because you were thinking about what you don't want rather than what you do want. When you think about what you don't want rather than what you do want, whatever you focus on is what shows up in your life. And because that's how you were focusing, that's what showed up. Now you're like, oh man, I got to get that out of here. Well, just start thinking about all the things that you desire. And I know we have such large desires. We want to do this. We want to do that. And it is okay. Also remember that whatever comes to you, it's okay because things are always working out for you. They work out for you. They work out for me. And they don't always come the way we think they're going to come. But I guarantee you, they do come. And when it comes, it's working out for you. That is one of the best things that you can always know. Things are always working out for you. 